Hi, Mr. Weingarten here. I want to take you on a whirlwind tour of why I believe we need to understand algebra. Let's start off with uh, stuff that we see in the world around us every day. Every day in the news we are bombarded with mathematics, whether we know it or not. And sometimes we know it and we're not quite sure what we're being told. Uh, this is a graph of the stock market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, starting in back in the 70s and going all the way up to today. You might notice that the graph has an x-axis and a y-axis and there's points on the graph and they go up and they go down. And we're really kind of concerned. People who invest money in the stock market, people who want to save for the future and want their money to grow, are are really kind of concerned about the patterns that we see here. And it turns out that we can use math to model these patterns to make predictions about the future. And it's not just the stock market that we're concerned about. We're concerned about the price of housing. We're concerned about the price of the house that our parents currently own and live in. And we're concerned about our ability to afford houses in the future. Again, what's happening? Are we buying at a high in the market or are we buying at a low in the market? Uh, and, and where are the prices going to? And is the price growth sustainable? These are questions that we can answer by understanding math better. For example, take a look at this. Here's housing data since 1970 all the way to nearly to today. And we can see that there's been a pretty strong linear trend all along, except for this big, huge, well, let's call it what it was, a bubble. Uh, and it turns out that if you understood something about math, it was pretty clear that something was wrong. Unfortunately, a lot of people got burned by this bubble, even very smart people involved in leadership in our government. And this is why it's really the responsibility of every citizen to try to understand math a little bit better. And what about the planet itself? What about the world we live in and the air that we breathe? And, uh, and what, how safe is the world going to be to live in tomorrow? Well, we need to be think, uh, concerned about bigger things like climate change. And climate change, in order to understand whether it's really an issue or not, you must understand some of the underlying math. Again, we have data, we have graphs, and we can make predictions about the future. There are scientists that work on this, and there's people that poo-poo those scientists. And I got to tell you this, you don't have a right to poo-poo what you don't understand. You really need to take the time to understand the underlying math if you want to understand the concepts that are being discussed. It turns out there's an awful lot of people in our country that have opinions about all sorts of issues. And I have to tell you this, opinions are great, but it's not nearly as good as solid understanding. I'm going to let John Oliver talk about this for just a second. That doesn't matter. You don't need people's opinions on a fact. You, you might as well have a poll asking which number is bigger, 15 or 5. Or do owls exist? Or are there hats? Thank you, John. I totally agree. We don't need opinion polls on whether owls exist. Uh, we, don't, we certainly don't need an opinion poll on which is bigger, bigger, 5 or 15. What we need is people who get the math. And what about new stuff that's coming out all the time? Thing, again, stuff in the news like Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Uh, is, is this something that we should buy now? Well, let's see here. Um, it looks like April 17th, it might have, uh, or April of 2017 might not have been a bad time. But is now a really good time? Hmm. Yeah, you got to look at the numbers. And, and again, uh, you know, is, is buying Bitcoin any better or worse than playing the lotto. That's something that a lot of people think about as well. And it's very tempting. Believe it or not, we're going to go through the math in this course about whether what, what are the odds of winning the lotto and how do we determine those odds. Back to Bitcoin just for a second. Again, cryptocurrency. Um, there's very smart people that are not sure whether Bitcoin is a boom or a bust, whether now's a good time to buy or now's a good time to get the heck out. Um, I got to tell you, me personally, 
I'd say give it a little bit of time. Oh, but I will say this, is that even things that I don't recommend, like investing in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency right now, today, uh, some of the stuff that's going on related to them is still fascinating, and it's it may be worthwhile to look into for understanding where we're going to go in the future. Turns out that there's some basic math that underlies the technology of Bitcoin called blockchain and uh, and it turns out the block th this underlying math it's stuff that we're going to study in this class uh, things like uh, uh, this curve here that can be plotted on a graph and this equation that's associated with this curve and and how various points on the curve are related to one another these are things that we study in math class you might even recognize this guy right here y equals mx plus b it turns out that a lot of things that we learn in Algebra 2 class are underlying foundational pieces of information that help us to better understand more advanced concepts. And then, of course, there's just the stuff that we're concerned about in the everyday world around us. Things like sports. On a three-point shot. Curry typically releases the ball between 50 and 55 degrees at just 6'3", four inches shorter than the NBA average. Not only does this higher trajectory help him shoot over taller defenders, it also creates a larger target at the other end of the parabola. Yeah, the good old parabola. Based on uh, the graph that you get when you graph a quadratic equation or a quadratic function. We're going to study that in this class. And it turns out that if you want to be the best you can be at sports, it's helpful to understand some math because math is the foundation of physics. And really, more and more people and more and more businesses and companies and industries are are interested in integrating math and mathematical analysis in what they do look at major league baseball got to get into a route efficiency we got to get into first step quickness 0.23 seconds ryan goins makes the right move running a post corner route back in the end zone distance covered 124.7 <laughs> feet route efficiency almost perfect Hit the pylon, touchdown, making people. Pretty cool. Okay, what next? Uh, well, uh, why? Why today do you need to know more algebra more than ever? Well, we, we started off, mankind, uh, uh, we, we changed from hunting to growing. Uh, when, when man figured out how to grow, we entered into something known as the agricultural revolution. And it changed a, a, a lot of the way that things worked and a lot of the jobs that people had to do. When we got to the Industrial Revolution, again, the types of jobs that were available and the things that we needed to do to make a living in society changed. And many of you may know that today we live in something called the Information Age. We've passed the Industrial Revolution. It's more important than ever to understand technology, and a lot of what uh, is underneath the technology is an understanding of math. What about the the world that we live in, in the in the in the in the solar system that our planet exists in, and the and the galaxy that that lives within, and the the universe beyond? Uh, we as humans are interested in knowing more about the, the world we live in and the universe that we live in. And we may have very good reason for this. It's possible that many generations from now, this planet might not be, life on this planet might not be sustainable. We might have to go elsewhere. Well, how do we know how far it is to get someplace else? And, and can we come up with the technology to make it happen? And what about things that are small? How do we know what a molecule looks like or an atom or, or, or how they interact together uh, and, uh, and, and how we can make molecules and atoms interact in new ways to, to learn and create new things? There's a lot of math that underlies all of this. Now, Sadly, not everything can be about videos and audio and having fun all the time. If we want to understand the math, we might have to actually get out a pencil and paper and write out some equations, and we're going to be doing an awful lot of that in this class. 
I do want to leave you with one last thought on why I believe it's important for us to understand this algebra. And I'm going to leave it to President John F. Kennedy to explain uh, why I think that he's going to give you some similar reasons to why I think we need to learn algebra. And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because and, and really, that is why we're here in this class, to learn algebra. It's certainly not because it's easy. It's because it's hard. And I got to tell you this, for those of us that overcome the challenge, uh, we're gonna, you're going to reap the rewards. And for those of you that struggle, even the struggle is going to be beneficial to you. So we're not here because it's going to be easy. We're here because it's hard.